Hi everybody, it's Lori again, and welcome back to my kitchen. I know it's been a long time since I have created and put a video out. Um, things got kind of sketchy around the holidays for us and on into the new year, and we've been uh, kind of struggling against a few things, but we've got it all back in line and everything is going smoothly again. And so it's time for me to get back into the kitchen and start canning again, and also to share with you so that you can do the same in your house. Today, I have a recipe that I created um, for using ham. Now, I had bought some hams after um, Thanksgiving on sale and just chucked them into my freezer, and I needed to get those out of the way, taking up space in the freezer, so I defrosted them the other day. Um, they're spiral cut hams. Now, I don't care what kind of ham you have, you know, you use whatever you have on hand. Um, the ones that I found on clearance were spiral cut hams. I personally don't really care for spiral cut hams. They tend to be super salty um, to my taste buds. So after I defrosted fully the spiral cut hams, what I elected to do is I soaked them in a sink of cold water, <clears throat> excuse me, for approximately an hour. And that kind of drew some of that extra saltiness out of the hams and now they're just fantastic. So today I would like to share a recipe that I created for ham and lentil soup. Now this is really flexible. You all know that I really like to do things just um, as flexible as I can so that if you don't have the exact same ingredients that I do, you can use what you have on hand. So this soup I do feel is flexible. I prefer to use the ham in it just because of the ham flavor. But if you don't have ham, then feel free to use any other type of meat that you might have on hand, whether it be you know beef or pork or maybe even chicken or venison, whatever it is. Um, but I think that the ham really does lend a very, very special flavor to this soup recipe that I created. So I'm gonna tell you overall the ingredients that you will need. And then as I walk you through filling the jars, I will tell you very specifically of how much of each, each ingredient goes into each jar. So we will need three and a half cups of corn. Now, if you would prefer to do green beans instead of corn, that's absolutely fine, or carrots instead of corn, that's fine. Whatever vegetable you prefer, go ahead and use that. But I elect to use corn. So three and a half cups of corn, three medium onions that are chopped, you'll need one and three quarters cup of lentils. And I use um, just the brown lentils. Uh, you can use the green or the brown. Now the red and yellow lentils do tend to, um, in pressure canning, they uh, kind of fall apart. But the green and the brown lentils, they stay together really, really well. So those are the ones that I use. Um, you'll need four or five pounds of ham or whatever meat you would like to substitute for the ham. And you'll need about seven teaspoons of Italian seasoning. Now, I'm gonna stop right there and I'm also gonna say that if you don't have lentils on hand or maybe you're not a really big fan of lentils, um, you could realistically use any type of dried bean in this recipe that you choose to. You know, whether it be a pinto bean or a black bean or a navy bean, whatever. But I really do encourage you to please soak those dry beans overnight and then rinse them in the morning, uh, replace the water, put fresh water in there and boil them or simmer them for at least a half hour or 45 minutes, okay? And the reason why I say this is that if you put dry beans, which you can do, okay, there is a method of canning where you can actually put the dry beans into your jar and then you put broth or water in there and, and can it and, and the beans um, get soft and cooked in that process. But in this application, um, oh, I'm going to back up. They also expand extremely during that canning process when you do it from just the dry state. So in this recipe, we are creating a soup. And you don't wanna put those dry beans in there because they're gonna suck up all of your fluid and they're also going to expand greatly in your jar and you're gonna have a lot of overflow issues. It's just gonna push 
a lot of your juice and stuff out of the jar as those beans absorb the juice and get bigger. So if you're going to use any type of a dry bean, I really do suggest soaking and kind of boiling and simmer them, simmering them um, so that they're uh, completely cooked and they won't absorb a whole lot more fluid from your jar. Now with the lentils, lentils don't really absorb that much fluid. And so the lentils that I put into my jars are gonna be completely dry lentils, all right? They don't make as big of an impact inside of a canning jar as what a dry bean variety would do. So I'm just gonna walk you through what I did for this recipe. And, um, and then I will, um, per the norm, after my jars cool and seal, I will open one up so that you can see with your own eyes what the texture of this finished product is. So I'm gonna tilt the camera down right now and get you onto my work surface. So after I cut, first of all, I cut all of my ham off of my ham bones. And then I took and I put all of my ham bones into a large stock pot and any of like the, the skin or large fatty areas, I just threw that all into a stock pot and I just covered that, all of that stuff with water and I simmered that to make a nice homemade ham broth. Now I didn't put anything else in it. There's no onions, there's no salaries, there's no garlic. When I do ham stock or ham broth, all I use is just the bone and any cast off pieces of fat or meat or whatever that I don't wanna use. I just put that all into my uh, stock pot and just barely cover it up with water and then I boil it. Now ham is one of those things that it is so flavorful. Um, when you're making most bras, you just cover the bones and stuff with water. Ham is one of those things that you can actually add additional water above the level of the bones and you're still gonna come out with an amazing tasting broth just because ham is so pungent and strong um, and specifically flavored. There's enough flavor from those bones and those cast off uh, you know, skin cuttings and whatever that you're gonna have a wonderful flavored broth. So I have already made my broth and I just have that setting aside and waiting for me at this point in time. All right, so the recipe I created will fill seven quart jars for you. And most canners hold seven quarts, at least the stovetop models do. Now, if you're working with an electric uh, canner, you might have a couple of quarts that maybe you can't fit in all at once, but most stovetop models hold seven quarts. So I created and based my recipe off of seven quart servings. So I chose to use frozen corn today. Now, I made sure to heat this and completely defrost it um, before I start using it in my canning jars. So if you, like me, are gonna be using any frozen vegetables, you know, whether it be frozen carrots, frozen green beans, frozen corn, please make sure that you completely defrost it. And what I do is I just measure one half cup of your vegetable into each quart jar. All right, I'm gonna set that aside and out of my way. And then what I did after that is I added my lentils right on top of that. And it's just one quarter of a cup per jar of lentils. And now, like I said, you can use the green or the brown. The red or the yellow lentils, they tend to kind of disintegrate under pressure canning or extremely long hot water bath processes. So I do prefer either the green or the brown lentils. And it's just one quarter cup of dry lentils per jar. Oh, 
All right. And then we are going to take those um, three chopped onions and just equally distribute them throughout the jars. that out of my way and see where I can put these extra onions. Wherever you feel like you're maybe a little, little scant or whatever, just stick those extra pieces in there. Just equally distribute to the eye. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same with our three chopped peppers. Just gonna equally distribute through the jars. Is somebody here? Is Daddy home? The alarm dog is going off again, guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, so we have our green bell peppers equally distributed into all of our jars. Now, this is the point in time that I like to add my seasoning and it's one teaspoon of Italian seasoning per quart jar, okay? And this is just mixed dried Italian seasoning. So we'll go ahead and put a, a good teaspoon of that in each jar. You know guys, I think that when I was reading my recipe, I forgot to tell you I had cabbage in here too. Well, you know, I'm not perfect. So this does call for also, if you have it on hand, about a half of a large cabbage. And what I did with my cabbage is I went ahead and I blanched it or wilted it. And it's really important with cabbage, um, it's important to wilt it so that it doesn't take up so much volume in, um, in the jar. You know, how, how big and fluffy and crispy and crunchy cabbages when it's fresh and uncooked. So cook this just a little bit, just blanch it a little bit so that it wilts a bit and it will fit in your jars a little bit better and it will not take up quite as much room. And I just fill these now. We have all the rest of our vegetables in our jar. I just put in enough cabbage to fill the jar up to approximately one half full. So you just go ahead and you eyeball that, you know, depending on what other ingredients you have in yours. Um, I just kind of eyeball it and those will pack down a little bit in a minute. Get this all distributed. And because that cabbage is um, blanched or wilted, I am able <clears throat> to take and just kind of press it down in the jar a little bit with my fingers. So ultimately what my goal was here is to get my jar approximately one half full with all of these ingredients before I add my ham on top. 
that one is a little full. I'm going to take a little out of there. Okay, so as you can see, we're at about one half of the jar, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and find where I put my, there it is, my funnel, sorry. And then we're just going to take and we're just going to press ham on top of that to approximately a little bit more than one inch headspace. I don't like to go all the way up to the bottom of the threads of the jar. I leave a little additional space underneath that. Um, we do still have to get broth inside of this jar, but you go ahead and pack your ham in. Don't, don't pack super, super tight, you know, because like I said, you do have to have some broth in these, but you can press the ingredients down a little bit and you're still gonna have plenty of room for your lentils to expand just a titch in your jar. Now lentils don't expand um, quite like beans do, uh, dried bean varieties, so they're not gonna expand a whole lot. Um, but I just found that leaving just a little bit more than one inch headspace on this worked really, really well. So that's what I'm going for again. And also again, if you don't have ham, you can use any other type of meat for this recipe that, uh, that you have on hand or that you prefer. I just really, really enjoy the taste of ham in this particular soup. Sometimes those funnels are lifesavers and sometimes they just kind of get in your way. I'm a person that really likes to go by touch. I just feel, feel the contents in my jar and I kind of know what I you know, if I want a little bit more, if I don't want a little bit more. All right, so I think that that looks pretty good. So I'll pick up the jar again so that you can see it a little bit more closely. So we have our corn, our lentils, our onions, green peppers, or any other kind of, you know, colored pepper, our cabbage, our wilted cabbage, and then I have pressed ham on top, okay? So at this point in time, then all I'm going to do, oops, I'm sorry if I bumped the camera there, guys. All I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up these jars. Now my ham broth, I told you that I pre-cooked that and I have allowed it to cool. It's a little bit warm yet, um, but if you're going to put hot broth into your jars, please do it slowly so that you do not have thermal shock, okay? Mine is pretty cool already at this point in time, but there's still a little warmth there. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to bring that broth up to one inch headspace um, in each jar. I guess, you know what, I'm going to tell you about an inch and a half because that's what... That's about what that comes to, is about an inch and maybe a half. That's where I like to have my broth level. Now, I'm not a huge person that does a whole lot of debubbling um, very often, but because of the fact that we have these, this particularly this layer of cabbage in here, I can tell my camera is glitching. Hang on here. Okay, guys, it looked like I'm having some technical difficulties. And yeah, it's still really, really jumpy. Well, I don't know what to do about it. I'm already, already mostly through the project, so I guess we're just going to continue on and uh, hope that whatever the issue is kind of straightens out on its own. But anyway, I am not one that likes to debubble a whole lot, but with this particular recipe, because of the cabbage, um, I do tend to like to debubble this one 
just because some air and stuff can be trapped underneath that layer of cabbage. And you want to make sure that there's just no big pocket of air. So I'll go down the sides and I'll actually even kind of punch through the middle of the layer of that cabbage just to make sure that there is no huge air pockets getting left in there. So let's fill another one here. Now there is no need for additional salt in this recipe at all due to the ham and the ham broth. But if you choose to use any other type of meat, you might, uh, you might decide that you want the flavor of a little additional salt in there, which is fine. I'd add, you know, maybe for pork or beef or whatever, I think I'd add about a teaspoon of salt to this if that is what you are using for your meat. Um, but with the ham, it just doesn't need any. It's plenty salty. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to complete filling the rest of my jars with my broth. And then I will come back and we will finish up, okay? So I'll be back in just a minute. All right, so I uh, got all of my jars filled with the broth and I debubbled all of them. And I just assured that every single one of them was at about an inch and a half headspace um, after I was done filling with broth. And it, when you debubble, if your broth level goes down a little bit because you've hit a hair, air pocket and so all of that broth is displaced down into that air pocket, then just add a little bit more broth to bring it back up to that one and a half inch headspace, okay? So now I just have my clean cloth as always. There's no tricks to this at all. It's just a wet clean cloth and just wipe all your rims to make sure that you don't have grease or food particles on there. All right, and then we are going to place on our lids and our rings. Now I am using my four jars lids again today. I love these lids, you guys. I have complete trust in them. I have not had any failures losing, using these four jar lids. I'm just a huge fan of these things. So if you haven't tried them yet, I really encourage you to get yourself some and give them a try. They are very dependable. So we've got our flat lids on there and then our rings. We're just simply going to screw on our rings, fingertip tight, don't overthink it, and slip that into the canner. Now, all of my stuff is pretty much at room temperature. My canner water is at room temperature. I did put just a little bit of cream of tartar in there. Um, some people use vinegar. I prefer cream of tartar. It's a little bit uh, gentler on your lids and your rings. So we're gonna screw these on, fingertip tight, get them into the canner and get the canning process started. Okay. Well, it looks like I have a little too much water in there today. So I'm going to ladle a little bit of that out. I could just tell when I had my jar, jars all in there that it was just a little too much water for my liking. So we'll just take a little bit out. Having your jars, after you get your jars into your canner, Having them submerged in about a half to three quarters of your, of your jar is plenty of water, even for a long meat processing time. So in my uh, preparations today, 
I didn't think about it a whole lot. I just put water in there, but I could tell that was too much after I got my jars in there. So, okay, there we are. We've got all of our jars in the canner. Let's get you tilted up just a little bit more here and we'll get our lid on. Now today you'll see that I do have one of my different canners. I'm not sure if I've ever, uh, ever done a canning process on camera before using my Miro, but this is my Miro canner. And this is what I have been uh, using recently. And so it was on the stove and that's what I'm using today. <laughs> She's a good little unit. I love Miro canners, I love Presto canners. So all I'm gonna do right now is lock on my lid. I'm going to, over medium heat, not high heat, medium heat, I'm gonna heat up my canner until it comes to a full vent. I will vent for 10 minutes and then for quarts of this soup, you will process for 90 minutes at the pressure that's appropriate for your particular altitude. Now I live right around a thousand feet and so I can use 10 pounds. If you live above a thousand feet, you're gonna to wanna to use 15 pounds of pressure. But we're gonna process these quarts for 90 minutes. If you decide to do this in a pint-sized jar, the processing time would be 75 minutes by PC. So I'm gonna get my heat on. I'm gonna get my canner heated up, vent it for 10, and then slip on my weight and process it for 90 minutes. And I'll be back when that's all done to show you the results. All right, guys, so here we are. I made it through my 90 minute pressure canning session and I, you know, let my canner cool off until I knew it was safe to remove the, uh, the weight and cracked it open after that was done, let it cool for about another 10 minutes and then I cracked it open even more. You can see here. So I have allowed this after it naturally depressurized, I've allowed this to cool another 20 minutes. You know, when your canner is closed, let's go like this. Your canner is closed. It's up to pressure. You want to check the safety blow off valve, make sure that there's no steam pushing it up. There's no pressure coming out of, out of that. And then when you know that it's safe to take off that weight, you finally remove that weight. And then you crack open your pressure canner just ever, ever so slightly. And you allow it to cool for at least another 10 minutes. Then after that 10 minutes is up, you come and you just move it a little bit more off to the side. You allow it to cool for another 10 minutes because you don't want all of that cool air just automatically rushing into that extremely hot canner and forcing the contents. This is what siphoning is, forcing the contents out from underneath your canning lids. So never, never be in a rush to cool your canner off. Canning takes patience. You gotta do this in little tiny patient steps. All right, so I've allowed this to depressurize, then I cracked it open just a little bit, allowed it to cool another 10 minutes, cracked it open just a little bit more, allowed it to cool another 10 minutes, and now I know it's safe to remove my lid. So, there goes all of that condensation that's on the lid. I kind of tipped it back into the canner and you heard it dribble. And now <laughs> we're going to look at these beautiful jars of soup. And they are absolutely beautiful jars of soup. Look at Look at these lentils. Look at that layer of cabbage and, you know, green peppers and onions, and there's corn in the bottom, the ham's on the top. Sorry, I'm having a hard time centering it. <laughs> Looking at myself in the video screen here. Look at how beautiful that is. Okay. Another thing that I'm just going to tell you, um, 
as you're using your jar lifter, you never want to lift on the screw-on metal bands, okay? On all of your canning jars, there's this glass lid underneath the threads that are built into your jar. You want to take your lifter and you want to get below that glass lid or lip, okay, at the bottom of all of your canning lids, all right? So you can see I'm below that glass lip, okay? My lifters are not touching that metal band at all. You want to go below that. That's how you want to lift your jars up. So we're just going to remove very carefully the rest of our jars. Oh my gosh, you guys, that is so beautiful. Look at how beautiful that is. All right. Now, we are going to allow these, let me tip you down here. We are going to allow these to cool undisturbed. We're not gonna touch the rings, we're not gonna touch the lids. We just put them onto the counter with a thick uh, towel underneath them. You know, always protect your countertops. I don't care what kind of countertops you have. Um, plus, you are also protecting your extremely hot jars. If your countertop is cooler than your jars, you could have thermal shock. So this is why we insulate it with very thick towels. And you take those hot jars out of the canner, you put them on a really thick towel, and allow them to cool undisturbed for, oh, I'd say up to 12 hours. So, tomorrow morning, I'm going to tip back up. So, tomorrow morning, after these, these jars have cooled and sealed, I'm going to come back and I'm actually going to pop a top off of one of these jars and put it into a bowl so you can actually see the results for yourself. This is absolutely amazing. All canned goods are amazing, but I think this one is extremely amazing because it really shows you how well the brown or green lentils and the cabbage holds up in the canning process. So we'll be back tomorrow morning. Okay guys, so I am back. I allowed my jars to cool and seal overnight. I had 100% sealing, um, which again, I will say I love my four jars um, canning lids. These things are just awesome. But anyway, I'm gonna page down. Now before I started this morning's um, taping here, I did take the opportunity to actually wash up all of my jars. Um, so I'm gonna page down and show you that's another thing that is just super, super important. Whenever you're canning, after you have gotten through your canning process and you've allowed your jars to cool and seal, it's super, super important to wash these up. So always remove your band because, you know, food particles, if you had any siphoning or overflow or whatever, sometimes grease or food particles can get caught in between um, the screw-on band and the threads of the jar. And so you always want to remove these and wash your jar up really good. If you don't do that and you have food particles caught underneath, you know, and in those threads, when it's on the shelf in storage, um, those food particles or grease that you have not washed off can actually mold in storage and it, you know, draws bugs and whatever else. So it's always super important to always wash your jars up when you're completing, um, you know, when you've completed your canning process. So I just took them over, removed the bands, scrubbed the jars up good, scrubbed the bands up good. And I just want to show you how absolutely, again, how gorgeous this is. Just look at how pretty it is. So I'm going to pop one of these open for you and I will show you 
what um, the texture is. Now it's morning and I really don't feel like eating soup right now, so I'm not gonna heat this and, uh, and give it a taste test, but I do know that this is super good because I've canned it before. It's wonderful soup. So we'll see if I can get this stuff out of here for you. And you can see for yourself. There we go. You can see for yourself what the texture of everything is, okay? I'm gonna maybe page that down just even a little bit more, here more if I can. Well, I guess I'm tipped all the way down. Doesn't go any further, guys. Okay, so we'll hold it here so that you can see. Look at how those lentils are still completely whole. Hopefully you can see that. The lentils have not disintegrated. They're still round and perfect. We'll stir up here, there's some peppers. The peppers are still, let me see if I can get one of those with my fork. Peppers are soft, but they're whole. Look at, they can withstand a fork. Now here's some of that cabbage. Now the cabbage is soft, but whole, and look at it. It withstands being on a fork. Just beautiful texture, beautiful texture. And let's see if we can find some chunks of ham. They gotta be in here somewhere. Here's some ham right here. Get off of that. There. And that withstands being on a fork. You guys, this is just really yummy licious in my opinion. It's a wonderful hearty soup. This is very budget friendly. Um, you know, the only item that I would say uh, is kind of on the expensive side is possibly the ham. If you're lucky enough uh, to find it on sale, snag those hams up. If you don't have time to can them right away, leave them in your freezer until you get to them. Lentils are very inexpensive. The cabbage is very inexpensive. This is just a very budget-friendly um, budget friendly meal. And the lentils are just like beans. These are just little protein-packed um, powerhouses is what they are. Um, so this is a nutritious meal also. Uh, one last thing that I want to share with you is how I label my jars. Now, and I'm not going to get into a debate with anybody. If you don't want to do this, this is absolutely fine with me. Um, canning lids are, the tin canning lids are all sold as one-time use lids. Uh, you know, when we had difficulties with supply and demand for the last couple of years, um, I have been reusing canning lids for years, but particularly in the last couple of years, I reuse my single use lids and I have had great success. I have not had any problems with them sealing or remaining sealed on the shelf. So I do reuse my lids. Now, these four jar lids, I have reused four jar lids at least three or four times, one lid three or four times. I've had no problems with it. Am I recommending that you do that? I'm not recommending it, but just know that there's quite a few of us out there that do reuse the canning lids. And that's why I've got this old vintage opener. If you can, you know, upon opening, upon opening your jar, um, if you can try not to damage the lid at all, that's uh, really important if you plan to reuse your lids. Um, try not to cause any damage to them. But anyway, um, after washing your jars up, of course, you want to label your jars. Now, years ago, I used to just write the contents and the date right on the lid. But since I am reusing lids frequently, I no longer like to write on the lid. It just starts looking just yucky to me. And so what I do is I take painter's tape and you can get this in blue, you can get this in green. The light green color is a lot easier to read than the blue. But what I do is I just cut a piece of painter's tape and I write my contents and my date on that. And the reason why I use painter's tape instead of masking tape is because it removes so easily and doesn't leave any sticky residue on your jar lid. So there we have it, guys, ham and lentil soup. Um, I am going to take one more minute. Sometimes I try to pack too much information um, in my videos, I feel, and I get these squirrel moments. But this morning I was thinking about it, you know, how I said that I really recommend these four jar canning lids. These are amazing lids. 
another brand that has absolutely got my entire trust and support is a brand called Superb. Now Superb, four jars are not manufactured in America yet, okay? But these are good quality lids. I'm not gonna get into the politics of all that either, um, but if you're looking for a good quality lid, these are good quality lids. Superb is actually a wonderful quality lid and these are manufactured right here in the United States in Ohio. These things are, they're like little tanks, honestly. Such a good quality lid and it's so easy to tell when these are sealed. Um, these things pop when they're sealing, man, they, if you're an old time canner and you remember back in the seventies and eighties, that, that ping or that really loud pop that we used to get from our lids, these superb lids give you that clear indication. They just pop so loud when they seal. These are absolutely amazing lids and I just love them. So I highly recommend if you're looking for good quality canning lids, either one of these brands, um, have my full, full support and faith. Um, I've been using them both for um, almost, I think I'm getting close to one year on both brands. And um, I've just had amazing uh, results uh, with both of them. So if you're looking for good quality lids, find you some of those, look online. Um, you know, yeah, you're maybe gonna pay just a little bit more, uh, but it's worth it. Uh, when you put all of the investment of the cost of your food, all of the time that you put in preparing the food and even the energy costs of, you know, the processing um, itself, you have a lot invested in those jars and we all want uh, the reassurance that all of that work isn't going to go to waste and having garbage canning lids is breaking hearts literally around the country. Um, and these two brands that I'm suggesting today are just absolutely amazing quality lids. So um, if you're having problems with any um, cheaper brand lids, even some of the national brands, okay, and I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to state them, but you know, they've been in the canning business forever. Um, the quality of those national brands has really, really gone down. And so I'm really glad to see that um, other people were experiencing that and they really stepped up to the plate and started manufacturing different uh, brand lids. You know, they've entered the market with better quality. And uh, I just seriously support these two companies um, because they're, they're giving us a good quality um, product and it has my complete faith. So I guess that will be it for today. Um, again, I apologize that it's been so long since I've done a video, but uh, hopefully I'll be cranking them out um, on a regular basis again here uh, since we got, you know, through all the garbage in the last few months. And uh, we'll just continue to bring you as much information on canning your own goods so that you can have food in your pantry and food security for your families. So. Until we meet again, God bless you all, and happy canning, everybody.